this is going to make you mad. If it doesn't make you mad, it should. What is going on on TikTok? Like, it's just a place where you can be whatever you want to be, even if that is a cancer patient. February of 2022, um, I had yearly lab work done just with my primary care provider as a standard checkup. And aside from starting to feel just a little bit off, um, my lab work came back and my white blood cell counts were not in normal range. So further testing was then done. And on February 10th of 2022, quite possibly the worst day of my life occurred. I got the call from my oncologist and they found a mass on my pancreas and I had stage two pancreatic cancer at just 19 years old. Hey you guys, if you don't know me, my name is Tracy Herlick. If you wanna to get to know me a little bit better, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is just my name, at Tracy Herlick. Um, before you leave, don't forget to like the video, comment for engagement, share if you think that this video is worth sharing, and if you really want to support me, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can do all of these things, you can do none of these things. Whatever you choose to do is good with me. Let's get into it. Today we're talking about a TikToker named Madison Russo. This is the second video that I've made about somebody on TikTok behaving badly. I'm going to link the other one down below because it is also crazy. But today, we're talking about Madison Russo. I do need to start this by saying, please do not go and show her any hate. That is not my intention with this video. That doesn't do anything to help the problem. Madison is a 19-year-old woman who's from Bettendorf, Iowa. Last year, Madison had a period of time where she wasn't feeling well and just weird things were happening, like nosebleeds and really bad fevers. So she ended up going to the doctor and running a whole bunch of tests. Unfortunately, they found that her white blood cell count wasn't in the normal range. So after that, she went to the University of Iowa Hospital's oncology department to run more tests. And then on February 10th, 2022, she was sitting in her accounting class in university when she got a call from the oncology department. And this is when she was informed that she had a mass on her pancreas and she was being diagnosed with um, stage two pancreatic cancer, which is extremely bad news for anybody, but especially for her because she had also recently been diagnosed with um, type one diabetes, which also affects the pancreas. And she said in that moment, she just went through all of the emotions. Like she was only 19 and like when you're young, especially you just think it could never be you. Nothing bad like this would ever happen. Um, you just kind of feel invincible. It would just feel so surreal. Scared is an understatement. I was terrified and I definitely still am. But I'm really glad I went to my yearly health check because it would have been so easy to just skip it and say I'm fine. So please take my experience and get regular lab work done because the sooner you catch anything that is wrong, the better chance of outcome and survival you would have. And it really could save your life like it did mine. So I guess surgery wasn't an option because the mass was on the tail end of her pancreas. So it was extremely deep rooted. Those are her words, by the way. And I guess doing surgery, there was more risk than there would have been reward. So they just said that's not even an option. Apparently she only had an 11% survival rate over the next five years. And four days after she was diagnosed, she immediately started treatment. She started her first rounds of oral chemotherapy, which she eventually ended up doing 15 rounds of. And then she eventually did over 90 rounds of radiation. And things only got worse for Maddie from here. Um, so I guess the treatment was actually working for the mass on her pancreas, but then she was ended up being diagnosed with leukemia. The cancer had spread to her blood now. It's a very lonely and isolating disease. So please don't take for granted enjoying every moment in your life, even the little ones. Please check in on your friends that seem strong as those people are often the ones that are struggling the most. They appear like they carry it well, however, they are being weighed down. Despite all of this struggle, Maddie was able to stay on top of everything and stay so positive. She ended up finishing that semester with a 3.85 GPA, which is 
way above average. And she ended up getting an internship at John Deere. So she was really holding herself together. Unfortunately, the treatments that she was doing was just taking such a terrible toll on her body. Um, It was way too hard on her liver. She ended up having to stop the treatments altogether and then she had to get on a medication to actually help her liver out again. She started um, noticing that her back was extremely sore all the time. So they ended up running a PET scan and they ended up finding a football size tumor on her spine. And through all of this, Maddie continued to keep such a positive outlook, even when everything seemed like it was going wrong. So here's her talking about that. Advocating for other patients and inspiring individuals along the way has been a coping mechanism for me. And I hope this story has inspired you as well. You know, when you get knocked down nine times up, you stand up 10 more times. Every single day, I go to war with myself because in order to survive, I have to fight like hell. The five-year outlook of survival is a slim 11%. 11%. At 19 years old, I don't know if I will live to see the day when I graduate college, get married, become a mom, etc. So in the meantime, I fight. I have to be so mentally tough to battle this beast. I might have bad moments of weakness from time to time, but I never give in. So yeah, she was clearly going through a lot and she was working so hard to keep a positive mindset. Um, So many people came together and rallied behind her on this. She had the support of a foundation called the Ole Strong Foundation. The Ole Strong Foundation was started by a woman named Peggy. She started the foundation because her husband, Brent, had actually lost his battle with pancreas cancer. Peggy and Brent had gone to school with Madison's parents, like elementary school, so they were long-term friends of the family. So when they found out that Madison also was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, um, Peggy wanted to do everything that she could to help her. She ended up putting like a little basket together with a whole bunch of just like support items and it included $500 worth of gift cards, just total donation just to be nice out of the goodness of her heart to help her out. And Maddie wanted to use her situation as bad as it was. She wanted to make the best out of it by helping other people. She ended up doing a lot of public speaking. Um, She actually spoke on behalf of the National Pancreas Foundation in Chicago. And she also spoke on a podcast for the cancer nonprofit organization called Project Purple. Experiencing these obstacles at such a young age has given me incredible drive, determination, and grit. Type 1 diabetes does not define me. Pancreatic cancer does not define me. Leukemia does not define me. I am so much more than these awful diseases. And instead, it's just another chapter to my story. Madison also had a GoFundMe started for her, and so it reads... On February 10th, 2022, Madison Russo found that she had pancreatic cancer and has been going to battle ever since to win this war. Maddie is currently undergoing vigorous chemotherapy and radiation treatments that make her very sick, but just like the Maddie we all know, she never gives up and she is a fighter. One can imagine this diagnosis has been very hard on Maddie's family. Just like with any cancer diagnosis, the cost of medical bills, gas, meals, and expenses can be a burden. And that is something this family should not have to worry about. If you are able to, donations would be greatly appreciated to help cover medical expenses and allow Maddie to focus on one thing only, which is to show that she is stronger than cancer and will beat this. Please donate slash share if you can. And then recently on January 9th, 2023, they said that Maddie was going to be starting, quote, a clinical trial drug to see if this could be the miracle to put Maddie in remission. The GoFundMe itself brought in over $37,000. And she also received other donations from other businesses, nonprofit organizations, and the school district as well. Other news today, it was a heartbreaking tale. A young woman battling both leukemia and pancreatic cancer. The cops say she wasn't sick at all. They say she was faking it to rake in thousands of dollars in donations. So plot twist, um, yeah, she was faking it all, all of it. And the only way that she got caught is because she was posting so much on TikTok. And of course, the internet does what the internet does best, 
and they pick things apart. They started to see that a lot of the medical claims that she was making and the treatments that she was doing just weren't really adding up with the illness that she had. And they were also able to see that a lot of her pictures were taken in an apartment, not in a hospital. <laughs> so that's obviously a red flag. The alleged scam was first spotted by doctors who wondered about this image that supposedly showed her getting chemo. It's not the way a medical port should look. The telltale giveaways, it's not sterile and it's not secured with medical tape. Look, this is a real medical port used for cancer patients. It's easy to see the difference. The police obviously got involved at this point. They subpoenaed her medical records and they found out that she had never been diagnosed with cancer of any kind and she had never had a tumor of any kind, like nothing. And that's really, really messed up. How much time she took to do all of this, um, to fake being sick all the time. She even tried to trick people by cutting the ends of her hair. So here's a picture of that. You can clearly see that it's literally just the ends of her hair that she trimmed off. And she said that that was the hair that she had lost and it, would, it had been so hard to go through. That is super disrespectful to people who have actually been through this. Um, it might seem silly to some people, but a lot of people who have lost their hair said that that was like one of the hardest things to accept because your hair becomes such a big part of your identity. And to add insult to injury, she also said this. Biotin, collagen, and keratin are crucial vitamins that are shown to help with like hair, skin, and nail growth. It's by the brand Well Labs. It's a beauty complex, but you can go to welllabs.com or I'm sure it's on Amazon. But I've been taking these. I've noticed a huge difference with my hair too. So that's been another really great product. I think that's helping. Like, excuse me, you're going to tell actual cancer patients that if they just take this supplement and take collagen, that they're gonna have a full, beautiful head of hair just like you? That is so mean. A lot of people who are actually diagnosed with cancer for real said that they were watching her and it actually made them feel so terrible about themselves because she was like having full perfect makeup every day. She was somehow able to still go to the gym, go to work, go to school, and also have all of this beautiful hair and they were finding it exhausting just to get up and walk somewhere. Like they just felt like they weren't doing enough. I don't know, everything that she did here was just super hurtful, but this hair thing just really struck a chord with me. You can probably, I mean, hair kind of matters to me. I can only imagine how it would feel. And then you have somebody like her just saying, just take collagen, it'll be okay. That's me. I do not understand why she did all of the things that she did. This cannot just be for money. Like she made this her whole identity. She put all of her time and effort into this, faking being sick, even doing public speaking. And on that point, actually, the foundations that she said that she was affiliated with have come out and said they don't even know her. They've never spoken with her and she has never spoken on their behalf. So. They have nothing to do with her. I don't know. One of them is lying and I know who I think it is. And I don't think that it's the foundations. <laughs> Just saying. Anyways, she did all of this. She involved herself in a situation that she never should have even been involved in at all. And maybe she did all of this to make her story more believable. Therefore, you would get more sympathy and more sympathy means more donations. But the time and effort that she put into this just go get a job. I legitimately just do not get it. And it also seems like she was just kind of getting away with it for so long because nobody looked into it, which why would you? When somebody says that they have cancer, you believe them. And she just got really comfortable and overconfident and then she started making mistakes, like posting pictures that medical professionals would obviously be able to see and tear apart. What is going on with that chest port? I am not a chemo nurse. Never done anything like this, but I want to see if it's actually true. Definitely not comfortable, uh, but I could see if you taped it, it, you could make it work. This is one of my son's old G-tubes. Well, not G-tubes, but food bags. You also have to shove this piece really far up there to get where she was, where she just had the slightest amount of purple showing. 
My nose is big, but it ain't that big. If you have to go that far to fake a disability, shame on you. She obviously didn't do enough research before she was posting these things, but she just got really comfortable and really lazy. And thank God that she did get really sloppy with what she was posting because everybody who had donated to GoFundMe got full refunds of their money. And she's obviously banned from using the platform ever again. One of the people who made a $500 donation, he said that when he saw that his donation had been returned and he hadn't heard anything about her, he thought that she had passed away. So that's really sad. She's alive and well and living her life and she literally had people out there mourning her loss thinking that she lost to cancer. And this man is actually a saint because when he found out that she was still alive, he wasn't even mad. He actually made a statement that just said he's sending her prayers because she is going to need them because of the situation that she got herself into. But that's another good point that I wanted to bring up. When people do this kind of thing, they make other people leery to trust again. Um, when they see something like this, they aren't just going to be quite so quick to jump at the opportunity to donate to people. And, you know, the next person might really need the money. And this person ruined it for them. Because if you can't trust somebody who says that they have cancer... Who can you trust? We also spoke to another donor who asked not to be on camera and donated $200 to Russo's fund and said, quote, Now I am sickened, not for my $200, but that now I have to hesitate about helping others. It's really sad to think about how many people far and wide this actually did affect. Um, it's definitely not a victimless crime. And I'm personally still stuck on the fact that I can't figure out why. If you even have the inkling of a thought that you should go and try to make money by scamming people, don't. Just go to work. Get so busy at a job that you don't have time to scam people. Because if you do, you're gonna get caught, you're gonna get arrested, just like Madison did. On January 23rd, 2023, the police went right to Madison's school and they took her into custody. But a guy named Tom Booland, he actually came up with the $10,000 bail for her to get out of the Scott County Jail. So she is, as of right now, she is free. The GoFundMe has since been taken down by the organizer who's listed as Tom Booland. And according to court documents, Booland also bailed out Russo from the Scott County Jail. But we don't know what his involvement is. Um, maybe he was super involved in this or maybe he has no idea. Maybe he still believes her. Who knows? I don't know how you could at this point. But, I mean, I'm just saying, we don't know what's going on there. We don't know who he is. So I'm not going to speculate on that at all. So the same day that she got arrested, they went to her apartment and they confiscated a lot of evidence. Um, there's a list on the screen right now. But mostly medical equipment that they found, $346 exactly, <laughs> and other expensive things, and even her 2023 Kia Sportage. The police also seized $33,000 from two bank accounts of Madison's herself and then also some of the money came from a third bank account that was shared between Madison and her mom. Again, I'm not saying that her mom has any involvement. I have no idea the situation there either. But anyways, I don't know where the other like over $4,000 was. I'm going to assume that her or her family or somebody's gonna have to pay that money back at some point. She's gonna be back in court on March 2nd at 11 a.m. because she has been charged with theft and that's when her arraignment hearing is. So I'm super interested to see how that goes. I don't even know what her defense would be. I'm super interested to see what other people think that her defense is gonna be because to me, there's no defending this. I don't even know how she feels comfortable showing her face anywhere other than to just say that you were sorry also, at this point, Maddie has deleted all of the TikToks. You won't even find a trace of it on any of her social media. Um, don't even bother going looking. It's best to just not engage with anything that she's doing at this point. Anyways, that's all that I have for now. Um, let me know down below if you've heard of this or if you've heard of other cases like it, other scams that you've heard of. I want to hear about them. I like looking into them. And um, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And hopefully I will see you here again next week. Bye.